Yes, and I'm too interested in that. We know that God still moves, amen? In fact, if I remember correctly, one of the interpretations we had last Sunday was about that very same thing. God still moves. I've always uh, wanted to make sure I obey the pastor, and pastor, when I came in today and saw that contraption over there, I was thinking, the only thing that's missing is some ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Just only kidding. I heard it was for <laughs> I heard it was for the married set. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> Let's open up church this evening in our worship service and we'll start off with I will enter his gate. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. He hath made me glad, he hath made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. Yes, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. Yes, he hath made me glad, he hath made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. He hath made me glad, he hath made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. Yes, he hath made me glad, he hath made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. He hath made me glad, he hath made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. When my Savior reach down for me. Sister Karen will start off with verse 1. Well, Sister Stephanie. <laughs> Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way I was wretched and vile as could be Savior in love gave me peace from above when he reached down his hand for me. When my Savior reached down for me, when he rejoice since I made him my choice in the tempest to him I can flee there to lean on his arm safe secure from all harm since he reached down his hand for me that wonderful church when my Savior reached down 
for me. When he reached way down for me, I was lost and undone without God or his son. When he reached down his hand for me. Let's sing that chorus again, church. When my Savior reached down for me, when he reached way down for me, oh yes, I was lost and undone without God or his Son when he reached down his hand. For me, I was lost and undone without God nor His Son when He reached down His hand for me. Amen, amen. Give God some thanks for that church before you have a seat. Well, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Hope we have a, a good evening on this message. There's an, <clears throat> a, f a few very important points we'd be bringing out. And, uh, <clears throat> and again, we're dependent on the Holy Spirit to help, as always, and is uh, absolutely necessary. Father, as we... Gather, uh, are gathered here in the name of Jesus and to receive a message. <clears throat> Lord, we know for sure, and it's extremely important, that we put no confidence in the flesh, but we put our confidence in you and ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to open our eyes, to open up this message. Lord, and that your servant would make it clear as he ought. That can only be done by your help, Lord, and I'm dependent on you. Lord, I also ask that uh, <clears throat> you post your angels around this church and keep back any unclean spirit that would try to detract or to um, cause a problem with our understanding of this message. And for that, we thank you also, Lord. Well, okay, we are. It's it's on. Can you? Yeah, it's on. Can you? I I don't know how well it's coming across out there. Can it's not? You need it up more sound. They're saying they need it higher. Uh, test, 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 test. <clears throat> voice check, check, level, level check, check, I don't know, I think she's turning a lot of dials up there, is it, is it good now, Stephanie, yes. yeah, okay, well, thank you, um, and again, just by way of reminder, this, <clears throat> the crux of this study is the power of the cross relative to our progressive sanctification, which started the very moment we were saved. It's God's intention not to leave us in the place we are, but to remove those things from us. So he made a way to bring that about. And uh, one of the main points Paul speaks about is, it's not by our doing. It's not by works. If we think we can remove uh, any sin from our lives and get dominion in, in, uh, uh, in such a way that it doesn't have dominion over us, we're, we're missing what Paul taught. 
And, and with the help of the Lord, that's what we're trying to bring out to make that clear. Uh, we're in, again, we're in Romans 6, and we're looking at verse 5. And I left off, oh, just a little bit into it, so I'll start out just a couple lines back. And Romans 6, 5. <clears throat> And it says his says here, if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Now we've spoken of just a little little bit. We touched on this. The spiritual effect here is a new creation. And I don't think we looked at that the last time, but let's look at 2 Corinthians 5.17. Corinthians 5.17. And here it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, you might recall here he, said, he uses these words, in Christ. He's referring to our salvation, which we just spoke of earlier in chapter 6, of being baptized into Christ. Use another word that makes it more clear, and, and we can't misunderstand. It's not talking about the sacrament of baptism. It's talking about a spiritual effect that happened. And I'll use another word, so it makes it, it's the same word, but that makes it easier to understand. When we were immersed into Christ, when we were born again, our spirit and soul were immersed into Christ. Or here it's using another other terminology, united with him. And it was united with him in, in the likeness of his death. Certainly, we shall be the likeness in the likeness of his resurrection. That death there, relative to us, relates to this the old man. And we're going to talk a little more on that again. But the old man, that is, what we were before salvation. Not good. I don't know. I can speak for myself. Now, there are some goody two-shoes people that live a relatively good life. And then there's that whole spectrum. And, and I among, I'm not alone, but uh, I'm certainly glad that the old man was made to die. Um, so... I'll go go all the way through it this time. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed, have, the old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And boy, that, that's an understatement. New things have come. I mean, they just keep coming, the new things. And, for that, every one of us could, could say amen to that. And again, meaning he has won the victory over death or the death. The Bible uses that term, the death. And the world, the flesh, and the devil. He won the victory. Now, the, that term was coined by theologians, the world, the flesh, and devil, because it actually speaks of that in the, in the word, but... The world there speaks, when it speaks of the world, is speaking of the world system of which Cain was the forefather of the world system. The world system works like this. It's anything other than the things of the Spirit. I mean anything other than the things of the Spirit. That's the world system. So he won the victory over the world, and the flesh. Now, the, the flesh 
as we know, at the fall, was totally and completely corrupted. We, it's hard to understand how bad that is, but you will, the closer you get to the Lord, the more you'll understand how corrupt the flesh is, how far away it has moved from God's original creation. It's just a, an amazing thing. And um, a prayer you want to, might think about before you pray it is one that I prayed. No, you have to do it, really. If you're a Christian, you have to do it. I said, Lord, show me myself. <laughs> Little did I know what I was in for. And, and the Holy Spirit was more than glad to do that. But it's a hurtful thing. And you know what? It's not done. He's still doing it. This very week, he showed me something again that was hurtful to me. That that needs to be brought to the cross, needs to be put under the blood. It needs to be removed by the victory he won. And that can only happen by faith, not works. Not works. By the works of the flesh, no one will be justified. By, or should, I said that wrong. By the works of the law, I'm sure you know. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. And that could also say, by the works of the flesh. No one, anything the flesh does in us cannot be accepted by God and it cannot be used by the Holy Spirit. And if you don't understand that, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to show you what that means. Because only the Spirit can open that up to you. Go. Now, now. Yes, yes. Could everyone hear that? Can you say it real loud so everyone yes. can hear? That's good. The scriptures say that the flesh is not subject to the laws of God, and neither indeed can be. So we have to kill this flesh. Yeah. We can't obey it. It's it's nothing. Yes. It's detrimental to our walk yes. with the Lord. If you understand that you're on the right road, if that's vague to you, you need to ask the Lord, show me. Amen. Send your spirit to show me. Because that's how we know it. We don't know that on our own. Just like every scripture. There is no scripture we understand on our own. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> that's a fact. And meaning, again, I'll reread this meaning, is one, the victory over the death. We will speak about that more. That the death, it says won the victory over death, the Bible. But Paul here would say, no, 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 that's not how I wrote it. There's a definite article before that, the death, meaning something specific. That specific is the sin nature. And we're going to get, we're going to open that up so it's more and more clear to understand. If you, if you don't, when you see, I, now me, I've written it in to my Bible before where it belongs because that's what Paul wrote. I'm not making up words to add to the scripture. In, in the literal Greek, that's what he said. So I don't think that's changing the word. Would everyone agree with that? So I've got it in there. And, and, where it, and many times it'll have that definite article. When it does, the death is a death caused as a result of the sin nature. So here we go. Um, and of course, he won the victory over the devil. The, the devil... The devil is subject to, to the finished work of the cross and that victory. And he knows that. And we're going to talk about that in just, no, that's right, next. 
uh, he's subject and he knows that, but he wants to convince you otherwise. And if he does, you'll have a hard time in your walk with the Lord if you allow him to convince you other than that. He is subject. When Jesus gave the apostles the power to bind unclean spirits and cast them out, that also was given to us. And he is subject to that. And I think in that story I spoke of that night, I was being spiritually attacked. Uh, when, When I put my faith, when I told God, I put my faith in the finished work that has victory over this unclean spirit that was messing with me, he he had to. I don't know what happens in the spiritual world, but I think he it could be an angel, wham, just knocks him clear off. I don't think they just go walking away like this. They are forcibly removed. That's my opinion. So anyway... Um, and we're going to look at this then. Let's look at like, Colossians 2, 14, 15. Colossians 15. Now this is really important. <clears throat> I, I think I may have brought this up earlier, but it, it merits being spoke of again. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Uh, 15. Yes, I do remember speaking this, but we'll go over it again. Make sure, because that's what we're talking about, the victory over the devil. And it says, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. He is speaking of the law, the law that we couldn't keep. He fulfilled the law in us. In God's eyes, we have fulfilled the law through Christ. Otherwise, we couldn't come into his presence. We could not come into the Holy of Holies without the law being fulfilled because we can't keep the law. That's how we can come into the Holy of Holies. It's his holiness. It's his victory by which we stand in the presence of the Most High God. And that just sends chills. And when I really think of it, you're talking about the creator of everything. And these magnificent laws of astronomy laws and the laws of like the DNA. If you just study one thing, the DNA of man. I don't know how any doctor could ever believe that just happened. It is so far removed from what they say, evolution. It's, you would have to, I I don't know how they could be deceived that bad to not see that this was engineered by the most high. So, um, so we're going to read that then. And then he counseled out that. He, he, he took it away because we can't keep it. He fulfilled the law for us. And he took it away, having nailed it to the cross. It's telling us there is the finished work, was the work that brought that about. And when he had disarmed the rulers, now we're getting to where we were speaking of now. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made public display of them, having triumphed over them. Now, I don't know how you feel about that scripture, but I think, shouldn't there be a whole chapter written on that? As powerful of a effect of that, how, why that, that little bit of scripture? I, I don't get it, but it's there. He disarmed them. And when he means he disarmed them, they no longer, the only have power they have is deception and intimidation towards us. That, and that's how he wins his battles, lies and intimidation. And 
we have to, that's why we have to understand the word. Uh, so it's so important to understand the word. Uh, it was said in the scripture also, my people die for lack of understanding of the word. If you understand his word, that's why we come and get taught. If we understand his word, he can't deceive you on that. And if we stand on what we've learned, and that's so, so, so important. Um, Okay, uh, let's go to Romans, now back to Romans 6 and 14, if if you would. Romans 6, 14. I'll tell you six, six, seven, and eight. Is a, I've heard many people say it is the most powerful part of the whole Bible, and I think it is. I agree with what they've said. In 6.14, we're just going to read that one scripture. For sin shall not be master over you. And um, Let's see, I'm trying to remember what the King James says, shall not have dominion over you. Is that right? It shall not have dominion over, and I like the way the King James says it. I like that a little better. Um, Shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law. We just spoke of the law was fulfilled. If we find ourselves trying to keep the law. See, here, you say, well, well, what is it now over us? We're not under law. Where are we? Who knows? You know. Yes, we're a grace, but there's a little, even a little deeper than that, and that's exactly right, what I was fishing for. We now have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that takes that, but don't, that's what he said. Grace is, you, you can't overstate grace. It, it, it precedes everything God does, grace. And that's why he would say that. But it's the Holy Spirit now. And guess what? The Holy Spirit has a tighter reign on us than the law. I mean, he's the littlest thing. He's there to convict us. Not con- condemnation. Don't get them mixed up convict us that, well, we need to take a step back and in, in, in go another direction. And if it's such a degree, you need to take it to the Lord. And how would he do that? See, here's how it works now. When we commit a sin, we must always confess that sin. When we take the forward, we confess, say, Lord, I was wrong. I I committed this sin, and I agree, and I ask you to forgive me. The next step that, oh, I don't know, I haven't met a person yet that says, when I was saved, that's what I done. um, Now I'm going to back, yeah, that's what I done. The next step is taking it to the Lord and saying, I can't do this. This thing the Lord convicted me of this week, first thing to my mind, and it was the right thing. I can't do that, Lord. I can't do this on my own. I bring it before you, and I lay it at the cross. For that is where the power that won the victory over this sin resides. That's your provision for removing sin. That is your provision for, prov- um, for sanctification, for um, <clears throat> progressive sanctification. What Paul did, what I did, and what probably everyone in here did, after you were saved, at some point, you said and you go, where did that come from? And so my reaction to it was like Paul. He says, I've got to try harder. I've got to, I've got to tie that thing down and get rid of it. That's what I thought. And that's what Paul thought. He started living by works. He was saved by grace. And then he made a paradigm shift to now living by the flesh or by works. He went a total, 
<laughs> and he didn't know it. And we didn't know it. But, yes. So he made a very good point there. When he said, crucified, die, die to yourself, you crucify yourself, means you go straight to the source of our freedom from that sin. Straight to the source. See, dying to self me, there means it's talking about the flesh, depending on the flesh. We crucify the flesh. We make it die. But we put our trust not in the flesh, but in the finished work where that victory was won. It, it, and, and, and it's not won by laws that we make up. I use fasting, and I, did, I don't know if I took enough time to make that clear. Fasting in its right place is very powerful, absolutely needed, and you need... Stay with it. But fasting was, if fasting could break the power of your sin, Jesus wouldn't have had to come. Sin was dealt with at the cross. Nowhere else, that's no other place. It was the cross and the cross alone where sin was and is and will be it's defeated there, not, not by... Here, it's really easy to figure this out. If it's something you do physically or mentally, you're off, you're off God's plan. You're doing what Cain did. You're bringing your own offering that you made up. If we turn to the flesh, please remember. Now, <clears throat> is, this is very simple. A, a child can understand it. But you know what? Doing it is not. Remember the illustration about the baby and how we taught them that performance equals reward? If we live our whole life that way, how easy is it going to be to switch and say, oh, Lord, I can't do it. I can only put... And so you will stumble and find yourself missing the mark. But all you do is, is what Paul said. He used the word twice, very powerfully. Examine yourselves and see if you're in the faith. In other words, are you putting your faith in the finished work of the cross for the victory, or are you doing something else? Now, I'm, this is so strong, I'm going to ask you guys to look it up yourself. There's another place where that word examine yourself is, that is widely misunderstood. I know I did. And it's, I'll give you a hint. Now, I'm not going to talk about it yet, but I want to give you a hint. It's in Corinthians. And it's widely misunderstood. So, all right, let's move on. And if someone wants to talk about that next week, do it. Or whenever, I'm, I'm not sure if it's next week. Anyway, um, and again, the finished work of the cross is where every one of our benefits come from. comes from. The finished work. That is our provision, our only provision. Now, I want, want to say this phrase again. The finished work of the cross is the only object of faith the Father will accept. Well, why is that? Well, because it was his son he sent to pay the price. And if we put our faith in anything else, you are making the statement by your actions, the cross wasn't enough. See? And that's what Paul in Galatians, what that was about. They were teaching the people, it, well, it's the cross, but it's this other stuff in addition to it. It's all these laws. See, and that's an affront. In, in fact, I think it's hard for us to understand how powerful a wrong that is in the eyes of Jesus and the Father. 
It's a, it's a bad place to be. Okay. Um, and, and again, the cross is, is a uh, finished work. Uh, when he died on the cross, it, the, he said, it is finished. It accomplished everything that pertained to redemption and our progressive sanctification. Let's look at 2 Peter 1.3. Thank you, Lord. I got to get in there. Uh, why is my mind not working right here? Second Peter 1, 3. And I think everyone's there. I don't see anyone flipping yet now. 1, 3. Uh, seeing that his divine power has granted us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Now, when he uses that word, he used two different words there, divine and power. He was divine. He was God. But the power he speaks of is the power that he brought about by becoming, by his own will, the Lamb of God. He became a sin offering. See, that wasn't an execution. They witnessed a live sin offering. And you know the the thing about it? When he died, they were just, according to their law, doing the three o'clock sin offering. That's just coincidence, right? (laughs) No, no, God is so, so wonderful how he puts things together. It's just amazing. It's amazing can, he can love me. I, I say that much. Uh, and again, I'm going to make this statement because this is going around, not here, but there are people that would have you to believe, and I can name a mainline um, uh, church, well, I'll name it, Calvary Chapel, that it has, <clears throat> when you go into their thing and see what they believe, and they talk about salvation, it will say the cross and the resurrection. That don't float with the Lord. That <clears throat> I, I think, did I, if I might have told this story about a guy coming to a Bible study. He, he was led to come to this Bible study. He's having a problem with something. He couldn't shake it. And he, he came and um, he was getting it, he was getting it across to him pretty good. And then the Lord Holy Spirit quickened my mind with something and I asked him what something Colleen and I learned in sharing the Lord with people and it's called diagnostic questions to see where a person is. And they said, if you were to die tonight, his name is Ryan, you don't know him, so if you were to die, die tonight, Ryan, and you were standing before the Lord and he said... Why should I let you in my heaven? He said, well, I believe in the resurrection. And the church he went to taught that. I mean vehemently, not. And I thought, that's why I like to bring it out. Now you can help someone else, maybe, that is, has that deception. Do, do I belittle the resurrection? <laughs> Not hardly. I can't wait. And it has a lot of uh, facets. And I, sh- I, I did a study just because of this stuff. And it, it was several pages of how important the resurrection is. So I don't want anyone to, to get that idea. Um, and it says, become united with him speaks of living a living, vital union of two individuals growing up together. God actually places the believing sinner into Christ at the, uh, into Christ because of that sacrificial offering to share his death and resurrection. And the resurrection it's speaking of here is the resurrected life of the new man. 
It's not speaking of the resurrection that we're all going to go to here maybe soon. It's not speaking of that. And it's talking about a spiritually resurrected life in us being a new creation. Um, <clears throat> I just went over that with you, so I don't need to do that again. Okay, now this, I, I, this is a little can be a little hard to understand. I don't know where each of you are, but we're going to try to unfold this. Six, six, Romans six, six. Okay, here we go. Spiritually speaking, knowing this. I'll give another minute here for you guys to get there, 6-6. Six, six. If you haven't noticed, I get wound up a little bit. This, this message is great stuff. and I love it. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with. The King James says, destroyed. Okay, that it might be destroyed. Okay, now, uh, knowing this, that our old self was crucified. A good way to say that that makes it easier to understand would use this term, made to die. Our old self, spiritually speaking, what we were before salvation was made to die. This in the eyes of the Father. That's what he sees. That's it, and that's where we're going here. Um, you know, that's a short that's a short little sentence, but it's a really big thing, freed from sin. Um, and I don't know if that has the definite article or not, but uh, anyway. So um, now we'll go on with this. Knowing this, our old self is crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with. Now, that's hard to understand. We're going to help it out. Paul here, if you could hear him, I could hear him, but I don't know how many you could. He said, no, it's not what I wrote, Tom. It said that our body of the sin, Young's literal, That's what Paul wrote, literally. Body of the sin might be done away with or destroyed. Now, to help out here, when it says that our body, it speaks of the whole. Remember that what we spoke about, about the flesh being, it can be, well, I better not go, I'll be a long time in that. But um, our body is a, a triune creation. The body the soul, and the spirit. So when it says the body there, it's speaking of not the, the, um, our soul, but everything, the body, in which is the soul and the spirit. So what it's saying here is speaking of the, the body, or we'll, say, we'll just say the soul and spirit, in which... The sin nature dwells. That's what it's saying. The body in which the sin nature dwells, the body of the sin. Now we're going to ask, put in what theologians said to help us understand it. See, so far it's hard to understand. So let's read it that way. The body and soul of the sin, where the sin nature resides. The sin nature resides. So it's the body of the sin nature might be done away with or destroyed. Now we have to understand this part here. It's, does anyone have a question so far? Did I, I didn't feel like I made that very clear. Okay. Might be done away with or destroyed. That's real that's not a complete answer that you need, but it's the 
what it means is here in the Bible, but it's not saying it well there for us to see it. That means you look it up, done away with, destroyed. It means rendered idle, inactive, inoperative, so that now it doesn't have its effect on us. Okay, that sin, the, the sin nature that dwell in our, dwells in our mind, will, and emotions, in our spirit and soul, is when we were born again, was rendered idle, inactive, and no longer can cause us, cause sin to have a dominion over us. Any sin. So, this, what you see here, we're going to look, we're going to see the effects of the sin nature in chapter 7. Where Paul says, for what I'm doing, I do not understand. I'm not practicing what I'd like to do, but I'm doing the very thing I hate. That's the effects of the sin nature. So now we know that when Paul was saved, he started to live by works. And we're going to learn this later. It comes right out and says it. The sin nature which was made dormant, it was inactive, inoperative, was now made alive again in him. Why? He was living by the flesh. He was living by works. He was trying to fix the problem himself. And what did it get him? What we just read. And that's just part of it. You read the rest. He keeps reiterating. It tore him up to the place where he said what I said. And I, I didn't use that word, but when I went to the Lord, and he, he, it tore him up so bad, he said, wretched man that I am. Why? He was living by works. He was living, controlling his life by works. So we want to understand that, um, now now I'm not getting the word I want, Uh, revival. We go to revival. If we leave there thinking, I'm going to do something about this, you have just, did what Cain did. You're going to do your own offering. You must learn. We must, and I'm still, I'm still doing it. The other day I came out right where I should, but there's times. We must reteach ourselves. We can't do it. And only the cross by faith can get the victory over that problem, what, whatever it is, however large, however small. So, now, um, now we're going to read it over again, the whole thing. I don't think I read the whole thing. Knowing this, that the old self was crucified with him in order that our body of the sin nature, with the sin nature in it, might be done away, the sin nature now, not the body, the sin nature in our body would be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to the sin. Now that's primarily what the sin, the uh, theologians looked at and made up the coin, the word sin nature. Slaves, so it reads this way, for us to help understand it. We would no longer be slaves to the sin nature. Now, is this starting to make sense, more sense, and and clear? So, what Paul did was by living by works, by his own effort, the sin nature came alive, and he became a slave to the sin nature. And the results of that was... For what am I doing? I don't understand. He didn't understand this sin nature yet. The Holy Spirit had not revealed that to him yet. 
for I'm not practicing what I'm like to do, but doing the very thing I hate. Now listen to this. Well, I shouldn't because I'm getting ahead, but if I do the very thing I do not want to do, I agree with the law, confessing the law is good. For it is no longer I am doing it. Now, you, know, I, you probably are not old enough. Remember, there was this comedian um, way back, a black guy, and he'd say, I think it was, maybe it wasn't. He'd say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> and it's kind of, I think of that, you know, it's the sin nature made him do it. Does that mean he's not accountable? No. Nope. Because he's made a way of escape. And if we use that way of escape, it won't have dominion over us. Are you in for a struggle living this? You bet. Because if you don't apply it right every time, then it will continue to have dominion over you. And you'll say to yourself, well, this doesn't work. Oh, no. It's not that God's plan that doesn't work. It's us that are not. And you have to examine yourself to make sure. And and it can't be a mantra. You can't say that I'm I'm under the blood of the Lord and that um, he paid the price. He won the victory over this sin. You can't just say it. You've got to believe that he won the total and complete victory over every sin. So, um, again, in my notes here, it's conditional for us to no longer be under the dominion of sin. It's conditional on of having faith. See how tough this is? We're, we're, we're taking this big yoke off our back. And, and live by faith in what he's already done. It, it is so simple. I've got to say this again. I've got to say that this was prophesied. Is it Luke? Who, who knows? Is Luke wrote, did he write Acts? Does anyone know? Did Luke write Acts? Anyway, here it is. Now, here's what it was said about that. Behold, you scoffers, and marvel and perish. For I am accomplishing a work. This is Acts 13. I should have said that. Acts 13, 41. Behold, you scoffers, marvel and perish, for I am accomplishing a work in your days. Now, listen to this. A work which you will never believe though someone should describe it to you. And you would not believe how many people will not receive this truth that in their mind they say, I've been living 40 years by the flesh and I'm not about to change now. When I heard it, it was probably about eight years ago, I thought, Lord, this is why I'm having this problem. Now I understand where I was failing. I, I didn't know the answer. The answer that Paul, that, and you know what? The Lord will allow us to be in that. Because when you fail enough and it just makes you sick, you'll go, when you find it, you'll go, you'll receive it with great joy. Because it is so powerful. It is so powerful. It's hard you know the what to do, and I've heard someone say this, it's kind of funny. You know the what to do or what not to do, but you don't know how to do the what to do. This is the how to do the what to do. This is it. Yeah. And if you don't know this, you'll be at the altar all the time. And I'm not, I'm not knocking. That's good. I want to go to the altar time. I just want to bring it before the Lord in front of people. But you have an altar at home, and you bring it to that altar, and he will set you free from that, and and he'll also remind you, there it is, you're under grace. You're not under law. 
The law can't touch you because you're not. It's like that ambassador. He's not under law. It, the laws can't touch him. You're not under laws but under grace. But we need to know it's important, absolutely important. The condition is we live by faith and not by works. Oh, there's a freedom in that that is just, it's, it's an amazing thing. I don't even have an idea what time it is. Oh, it's there. Good thing. I looked. Yeah, don't feel free to, to go like this or something to me. You will not, cor- correction, you will not ever get a response out of me. You correct me. I want to be corrected. I need to. So anyway. All right, we'll pick up where we left next week. Uh, Father, once again, we thank you. I, <laughs> we thank you for your spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, we, you, we, you are so graceful and good to us. Thank you, Father, for sending your spirit that we so greatly are dependent on, not week by week, not even really day by day, but minute by By minute, we are dependent on thee. And for that, we thank you. Now, Lord, I pray that in the hearts and the minds of those just learning, or even know this but need a reiteration in their spirit, that you would send your Holy Spirit to open the eyes of their heart in such a way that that light goes on and they go, Lord, Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. You know, I want to throw in something here. After, when I learned this, and I heard it taught, and the, whole, and the Lord said, Tom, you need to study this. I was terrible at studying the Bible. I just had the hardest time studying. I got in, and it was like a whole new book. And I would be reading, and just tears coming down my eyes, sitting there at that desk in, in my study. And just reading that and thinking, oh, Lord, this is so great, so wonderful. And that's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. Anyway, hey, thank you for tonight being patient. Anytime there's a question here that a, a flag comes up and you want a clarification or straighten me out, please say so. I, I want this. I want you to benefit from this the way so many other people have. So, okay. Now I'm done talking. (laughs) Oh, Lord. I didn't even get near as far as I thought I was going to get. Not near as far. Thank you. You mean a lot because you are a fine guy. Shut your mic off. Pardon me? Shut your mic off. Oh, yep, yep, yep. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you.